Welcome back to the main pre-configuration project and in this video we're going to be covering the Capcom games including the CPS 1, 2 and 3 games. Now this is more of an announcement video because configuring for Capcom was easy and straightforward. There's no tutorial stuff in this video at all. There is however a couple of things that do need mentioning and I'm also changing up these videos by spotlighting any hidden gems or any other cool stuff that I find along the way. So let's just get on with it. Now the first thing that I need to mention is that a bunch of the multiplayer games were not set to their maximum amount of players, which is of course what we want. However, with some of these games, if you set them to their max players, it fixes the character selection to the controller position. So if I wanted to play as character 4, I would need to press start on controller 4. Now in this situation, like I've done 4 in the past, I've configured for two versions. One that retains the character selection and one that's just been set to the maximum amount of players. The second thing to note is that all of the CPS3 games have a no CD version, which circumvents having to copy the GD disk data. So if you don't want to wait around for this, you can just play these and they'll boot up and play instantly. And of course, I've configured for both of those versions. So far, Capcom has been the easiest to configure for. The way they developed their games was pretty straightforward, making my life a hell of a lot easier, with no weirdnesses or awkwardnesses that I've got to circumvent. Now, I'm just gonna quickly spotlight a few hidden gems, none of which are gonna be CPS games because we're all familiar with those. The Speed Rumbler was an awesome little find. If I was to imagine Grand Theft Auto in 1986 as an arcade game, this is exactly what it would be. Black Tiger is an action platformer with some RPG elements and normally these types of games don't really do it for me but for some reason I keep on coming back to this one. And the last thing that I'm going to mention isn't a hidden gem, it's a hidden function. Street Fighter 3 Second Impact has a native 16x9 widescreen presentation. As usual, those main pre-configured files and my images are available over on LaunchBox, as is all of my documentation. So if you want to dive in deeper, this is the place to do it. And I'm also going to put this up over on GitHub and I'll put links for everything in the description below. There we go, that was Capcom. On to the next. And that's going to be the ZN1 and 2 boards, which is going to fill in the rest of the Capcom games that aren't in this one. And the reason I didn't put them in this one is because I want to cover the ZN1 and 2 boards as individual platforms, not as manufacturers. So if you want to keep up to date with that, you know what to do. And if you like today's video, slam me a thumbs up. And apart from that, go play some games. Adios.